Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to talk about planet Earth and one of the bigger problems currently happening on planet Earth that in some sense we don't really know how to solve. The problem is of course related to the climate change but there's one specific topic I wanted to talk about that has recently become a little bit unnerving and to some extent it's also something that is going to affect a lot of us in the coming years. We're talking about the change in regards to hurricanes. Hurricanes, typhoons, very powerful storms. This new paper that just came out made a really interesting discovery. It seems the hurricanes have increased in power dramatically over the past few decades. And there's actually only one reason they did so. Let's talk about this in more detail because the results are a little bit scary. But let's get the signs out of the way first. In the past few years, specifically in the last two or three decades, several different organizations in the world have been actively investigating the changes in the temperature of water around the planet. And I think one of the most famous investigations is actually in regards to something known as the Gulf Stream you see right here. It goes all across the North America and then even takes all of this warm water to Europe. And what all of these more recent maps started to show us is that in the past few decades, the temperature, the average temperature of water started to increase pretty much across the entire region. For example, here's a map that shows us so-called surface temperature anomaly. Everything that you see in red or yellow shows us the temperature that's increased over the average over the past few decades. Whereas everything you see in blue or purple, actually I don't think there's any purple here, shows us the overall decrease. So interestingly, the temperature right here in the Southern Pacific has decreased, but for the most part, everything in North America and also everything in the Mediterranean, everything in Northern Europe had an average increase of anything from one degree up to about four or even eight degrees in these regions here and in some other regions around the planet. Now, naturally, this warm water is going to cause a lot of different changes on the planet. The most obvious one is, of course, the ice melting, which obviously doesn't come as a surprise, and you can kind of even see how ice changed in Antarctica, for example, for the past few years, especially because apparently in the last few decades, we've lost several trillion, closer to about 8 trillion tons of ice, which then obviously leads to slightly more water in the oceans, possibly rising levels of oceans, and maybe some other problems. But because we've heard about this so many times now, I think a lot of us sort of normalize this, and then to some extent most of us kind of see this as a kind of a remote problem, possibly not affecting us directly, especially if we don't live near the ocean, like I don't live near the ocean, or we live really far away from Antarctica and Greenland. You know, it sounds like someone else's problem, right? And for comparison, here's by the way how the ice in Greenland was changing in the past few years as well which actually kind of mirrors the same situation in Antarctica. But it's important to understand that this is actually not the cause. This is the effect, obviously. And this is also the symptom of something else happening in the oceans that we should really be concerned about. Something else that a lot of us can be affected by and something else that has affected a lot of people in the last 10 years or so. We're talking about very powerful storms. Hurricanes, winter storms, typhoons, whatever you want to call them, by nature, a lot of these storms rely on the temperature of water in the oceans. And it's really important to understand how all of this might affect us in the future, especially based on the study. And so let's start with some facts. So first of all, hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, whatever you want to call them, they're basically the same phenomenon. And they all form using exactly the same mechanism in relatively similar regions on the planet. They all tend to start right here at the equator, because basically that's where the highest velocity of wind would be, Mostly because the so-called Coriolis effect, the effect from the rotation of the planet, is the strongest at the equator. And so what usually happens in these regions is that the warmer water starts to sort of evaporate and mixed with the wind and usually some sort of a weather disturbance like a thunderstorm, it sort of creates this very interesting motion of air that eventually results in basically accelerating, getting higher and higher, stronger and stronger, which eventually starts building this up vertically first, and then starts to move in a cyclical motion due to the Coriolis effect. But all of this is entirely powered by the warmth from the oceans and the water that's evaporated from the oceans. Eventually this picks up power and becomes a really really large cyclone. And once again, all of this is entirely powered by the warmth from the water. And the warmer the water gets, the more power it gets to pick up 
and basically deposit on the land afterwards. Because that's essentially what's happening here. The energy from the warm water gets to redistribute it onto land. And as you might know from experience, if you've ever experienced a cyclone or a tropical storm or really anything related to this, it can be quite devastating. So here's the thing, here are some facts. First of all, last year was basically the worst year or one of the worst years for hurricanes, at least in US. And according to National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, it basically cost the US quite a lot, a lot more than any of the previous years. And what's even more interesting is that there were so many hurricanes last year that they actually ran out of letters to name them. They had to rely on Greek letters for the second time in history. And it's actually the 10th time in a row now where the damage from hurricanes has been over a billion dollars. It hasn't really been happening that frequently in prior decades. In the last decade though, it has increased quite dramatically. And all of these hurricanes only have one single origin. It's the sudden increase in warm temperature in the waters around the region. This doesn't just affect North America, obviously, as you can see these hurricanes do travel quite dramatic distances, but it does affect North America the most right now. So for North America and for Asia, this is a huge deal. And all of this is really because of one single thing, the anomaly I showed you previously. The anomaly related to the surface temperature of water. But this is of course based on the idea that we understand how hurricanes are created. Are there any other experiments or data we have to confirm all of this? Well, it just so happens that the paper that I'm about to show you does have a very sort of scary data for us. The paper right here, that as always you can find in the description below, investigated the measurement of wind speeds from the hurricanes of pretty much every single hurricane that occurred in Bermuda between 1955 and 2019. And according to their paper, it looks like on average the total speed of the winds in a typical hurricane has basically doubled in the last, what is this, like 60 years now. Which also highly correlated with the increases in the temperature of water in the region. Now, this is of course correlation, this is not causation, but it is nevertheless a pretty scary correlation. All this kind of suggests that as the water keeps warming up, the hurricanes, the storms, and all of the other weather effects that a lot of us are affected by are only going to become stronger and stronger, more powerful, more damaging. And even if we ignore the fact that the ice is melting, the fact that the water levels are rising, the scary part here that is really difficult to ignore is that this is also causing the storms to be more powerful long term. And these climatic changes are kind of difficult to ignore especially because of the damage that it's already done in the last 10 years or so. Every single year the damage has been more dramatic, the storms become more frequent, they become more damaging, and more importantly, at least according to the data, it looks like it's only going to get much worse. And that's kind of the part where, as a science communicator, I personally feel kind of obliged to tell you about this, but not obliged to tell you what to do. What you do about this and what you do with this information is of course up to you. I'm not really going to lecture you on the climate change and how you should be driving an electric car. I personally have no idea how to solve any of this or what I should be telling you to do or what I should be telling my kids or anyone around me to do. I have no idea how to solve any of this. I'm just telling you that this is a fact and this is happening. And it's a pretty scary fact. What we're going to do with this knowledge and how we're going to basically affect the future of planet Earth is of course a completely different question for I guess a completely different video. I personally don't really know what I'm going to do with this information just yet, but I'm going to do my best. It's our planet, it's our home, and maybe there is still something we can do with our planet to make it a slightly more habitable planet for ourselves. But I guess on that note, check out the paper, it's definitely interesting, and also just be aware of this. This is something that is a little bit scary. We don't really currently know what's going to happen in the next few decades, but if this trend continues, well... I'm gonna have to move somewhere, because currently in the Asia Pacific, the constant typhoons and the constant damage from the typhoons has actually been getting more troublesome. And that means that, well, maybe just maybe it's time for us to do something about it. But anyway, on that note, well, as always, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, or by joining the YouTube membership. Either way, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with some video, maybe with some better news. For now, well, that's unfortunately all I wanted to mention. Not really good news, but still kind of interesting. Either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye. And fun fact, two years ago the typhoon here was so strong 
that we basically had to evacuate the region where we were staying. And I actually have never experienced anything so scary in my life. So if you've ever lived through a hurricane or typhoon, you kind of probably know how scary these things can get. Well, that's kind of it. But what exactly are we going to do about this? And is this something that we can kind of change? Now that's a question that I don't think anyone can answer right now. 